Getting to grips with rhythm is going to make a huge difference to your progress and I'm going to show you why it's not as hard as you think. When we're learning to read music, rhythm tends to be something that we ignore in favour of getting the right notes. We get very focused on making sure that we know what notes to play and we kind of hope we pick up the rhythm by ear without actually reading it from the page. But that's the wrong approach actually, the, it's the other way around. Um, the rhythm is actually much more important than getting the right notes. Um, it's what's going to make you sound more professional, more confident in your playing. People won't notice a few wrong notes, but if your rhythm isn't secure, if you don't have a good solid sense of beat in your in your music, it makes the listener uncomfortable, to be honest. More than wrong notes, they don't mind wrong notes, they don't even notice most of the time. But even somebody who's never played an instrument in their life will pick up if, if there's insecurity in, in the rhythm. So it's really important to have a strong understanding of beat and rhythm and how to read it off the page and how to make sure it's, it's accurate and confident. Um, luckily, that actually doesn't take too much work. Um, a little regular practice with uh, rhythm reading and certainly in any piece that you're trying to play to actually pay attention to the rhythm and work it out and practice that separately. It's going to make a huge difference to how you sound on your instrument, whether that's piano or another instrument. So what I'm saying is don't neglect your rhythm practice. It's actually way more important than you think. So in this video, I'm going to go over the difference between beat, rhythm and meter, um, explain what those are and how they work together. And it is important to have a good grasp of all three. You might not have realized there are three different uh, elements that we need to look at when we're talking about the, the rhythm of a piece of music. Um, we're going to look at why the traditional method of counting, um, you know, three beats in a bar or four beats in a bar can actually be very difficult to pull off and might actually be the thing that's preventing you from getting to grips with uh, your rhythm reader and understanding your rhythm. So I'm going to give you some alternative ways of, of looking at rhythm and understanding it and deciphering it. Some of them very intuitive, I use them myself. And actually using a mixture of different methods is really what's going, what's going to help you the most. Um, I've divided the video into stages. Um, so if you're a beginner uh, player, you can start at stage one, work your way through. I've got a couple of exercises, but most of what you're going to work from is the books you're using or the music that you're interested in learning. Um, and I've got some subsequent stages after that that add various elements of difficulty so that if you work through them all you'll have a you'll fairly confident understanding of how to decipher and count rhythms in any piece of music. In the notes below the video I will add um, the time stamp so you can jump to whatever level you need and then at the end um, I'll give you some strategies as how to actually apply it to pieces you're, you're learning some really useful exercises that you can do working with the w rhythm of the piece that you're, you're learning. Okay so let's get started we're going to examine some strategies for rhythm reading. So the first thing we're going to look at is the difference between beat, rhythm and meter. So first of all, what is beat? Well, it's basically the pulse. So um, it's that very steady, can be fast, can be slow, but it, it, it doesn't stop. It's what your foot does. If you're tapping to music, your foot is going to keep the beat. Your hands might be tempted to follow the rhythm, which we'll look at in a minute, but the, your foot can be solidly relied on to keep a steady beat if you're tapping along to music and that's basically what the beat is pulse think of your body you think of your heartbeat um very steady meter is the organization of beats into bars or measures so um three four time four four time um what that basically is telling you is uh where the strong beat is going to fall so for example in four four time you're going to have a strong beat on one and a secondary strong beat on three. So you're going to have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. If it's three, four time, it's one, two, three, one, two, three. So if you're listening to music, see if you can find where the strong beat falls and you'll be able to count uh, from there and find out what kind of uh, meter that you're looking at, your three, four time or four, four time. If you're playing music, it's very important to keep that beat that, that meter in mind because if you're not paying attention um, a 3-4 time signature can morph into a 4-4 time signature if you're stopping at every bar and that, that's something to watch out for um, that you're not and I'll show you some practice strategies in another video to stop that from happening but basically um, make sure that you're not going 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 1 2 3 because you may think you're playing in 3 4 time but actually that's 4 4 time there's a silent beat slipping in there so the bar line can be a bit of a difficulty in that people tend to stop at it and then move on to the next so it needs to flow through that strong beat needs to stay in position 
depending on what the meter is. But that's all. When talking about meter, we're talking about how the beats are organized in, in terms of uh, the time signature. And then rhythm is the pattern um, as determined by the melody. Okay, so you've got a beat underlying your song, your piece of music, um, and then your rhythm goes on top of that. So your beat might be steady, but your rhythm could be anything. It's going to uh, match what your melody is, and maybe the words of a song are going to determine what, what that rhythm is. So it's made, being able to put these three things together that drives a piece of music forward and makes it coherent and, and confident. Okay, so we're going to look at some um, easy rhythms or basic rhythms to start off with, um, stage one. So if you're a beginner or elementary level player, um, this is probably what you're looking at. Okay, so this is a fairly typical kind of rhythm. All the, all the main note values are represented here above uh, crotchets or uh, quarter notes. Uh, minims are half notes, dotted minims are dotted half notes, and uh, semi-briefs are uh, whole notes. Now, traditionally, uh, you might have been asked to count these by a teacher by playing, counting the number of beats that are in a bar. So you might have been asked to count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that's fine. It makes perfect sense as I go through it. Um, but if you're trying to play notes at the same time, uh, identify notes and other things that might be going on in the music, it's very hard to keep track um, of where you are in a beat, which, which one is the third beat, which is the fourth beat. I found when I'm teaching that um, young students are never able to do this. It's just it's just too much to ask them to do. It's nearly too much for me to do if I'm reading a, a complex piece of music. I can't really keep track of what beat I'm on, so I don't count that way. But in this case, I'm going to show you another way of doing it. Instead of counting four beats in a bar, or three beats in a bar, or whatever it is the time signature is asking, count each note individually. Okay, so then you're going to go one, 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 two, one, 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 two, three, one, one, two, three, four. It's much easier. Um, and when I adopted this different way of counting with uh, my young students, they got it immediately. And I've never had any trouble with um, rhythm um, counting with kids since I adopted it whereas I never had anything but trouble to be honest trying to count uh, four beats in a bar or three beats in a bar it was just too much to ask okay so here we have um, a pattern of crotchets and quavers are um, quarter notes and eighth notes okay so how you would normally be asked to count these would be to use the and for the quavers, isn't that right? Or and for the eighth notes. So then you'd go one, two, three, and four, one and two and three, four, one and two, three and four, one, two, three, four. Again, fine, but the same problem applies here. You're going to get lost in, in keeping track of what beat you're on. So here's where I'm going to introduce you to a different way of counting entirely, and this is um, Kodai rhythm language, uh, which is very commonly used. Uh, throughout Europe, um, and I believe India has a system of rhythm language as well for their music. It's very, very complex. This is Kodai rhythm language. Um, Sultan Kodai was a Hungarian composer uh, and music educator who put together a system of teaching that's still very much in use today. Um, and this is a very instinctive way to manage rhythm counting, and uh, certainly children find this much easier to manage than, than counting uh, numbers, but adults do as well. I certainly do. So instead of one number uh, for qu uh, quarter notes or crotchets, you're going to use ta, and for quavers or eighth notes, you're going to use t. Okay, so then this becomes ta ta t t ta t t t t ta ta t t ta t t ta 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 ta. When you're starting off with this, if you're kind of wondering, well, am I relating them correctly to each other? Substitute ta and tt for walk and running, and you, you'll, you'll understand it immediately. So then we'd have walk, walk, running, walk. Okay, ta, ta, tt, ta. Okay, so we're going to try out a few exercises. And here's our first one. You can use good eye language um, 
even when you don't have quavers or smaller than quavers. Um, I don't usually do it very much because it, 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 you don't really gain anything. So you could go ta, 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 two, ta, two, three, four, ta, two, three, ta, 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 ta. ta. Um, but as I said, you could just as easily go one and one, two, one, two, three, four. So that's absolutely fine. So you might want to just pause the video here and just practice uh, that for a little while. Okay, so uh, in this case, we have eighth notes or quavers, so it is worth our while here to use rhythm language, but I'm going to give it to you both ways and then you can pause the video and, and practice it yourself. So using numbers, first of all, and because we have uh, quavers, because our smallest notes are quavers or eighth notes, I'm going to count it all in eighth notes or quavers. So we have one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Always find out what's the smallest notice what's, what's the smallest value note and to use that as you're counting it kind of supports the rest of them because otherwise if you're not doing that it can be very easily easy to collapse the other time uh, note values and not give them their full count okay so then using rhythm language we would have ta ti ti ta tu ta tu ti ti ta ta tu three four ti ti ta ta tu Okay, so have a go at that. This one, uh, counting again with numbers, we would have one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Or in rhythm language, ta, ta, ti, ti, ta, ti, ti, ta, ti, ti, ta, ti, 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 ta, ta, Looking at it in a context, um, this is a very famous minuet in G major that you may be, may already have come across or may be hoping to learn at some point. Um, so again, we have a mixture of crotchets and quavers or, crot or quarter notes and eighth notes. So we'd have ta, t, 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 ta, 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 T, 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 Ta, Ta, Ta. Notice we're in three, four times. So our Ta, our, our first beat is going to be stronger uh, in each bar. So one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one, two, three. So moving on to stage two. So here we're starting to look at semi-quavers or 16th, 16th notes. Traditionally, you might have been asked to count these. Uh, well, we do count one E and A uh, as the easiest way, but you might have been asked to count, uh, switch between counting your semi-quavers and counting your quavers and your crotchets. So one E and a two and three E and a four. One and two e and uh, three e and uh, four. Not the easiest to get to grips with. First thing you would do if you still want to use numbers is to count uh, semiquavers the whole way across. So then you'd be counting one e and uh, two e and uh, three e and uh, four e and uh, one e and uh, two e and uh, three e and uh, four e and uh, and that just ensures that the larger note values get their full value that you're not accidentally uh, collapsing them and making them shorter. So in rhythm language uh, for semi quavers or sixteenth notes, um, we can use ticky ticky. Um, or uh, I've seen Takadimi taka also used. Now, there's no one rhythm language, so you can actually make up your own. But I use Tiki Tiki. Um, I feel it moves along nicely. So here we would have then Tiki Tiki T T Tiki Tiki Ta T T Tiki 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 Ta. Uh, for clapping that Tiki Tiki T T Tiki Tiki Ta T T Tiki 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 Ta. Okay, so let's try that out. 
So counting this, again, we've got semi-quavers, so we're going to use those as our, our basis, the basis of our count. So we'd have 1e e and 2e e and 3e e and 4e e and 1e e and 2e e and 3e e and 4e e and 1e e and 2e e and 3e e e and 4e e and. In rhythm language, that would go ta, ta, tiki, tiki, ta. T T tiki tiki T tiki, T tiki, ta ta two tiki tiki ta. If you want to, when you're practicing this, and certainly in pieces, it can be very useful to swap back and forth between rhythm language and counting because you can be absolutely sure then that you're you're, especially when you're getting used to um, rhythm language and you want it to become more instinctive comparing it back and forth between the counting and, and the rhythm language itself, you're, you're going to be more confident that you're actually getting it right. So 1e e and 2e e and 3e e and 4e e and ta, ta, tiki, tiki, ta. Here's another. Counting this would be 1e e and 2e e and 3e e and 4e e and 1e e and 2e e and 3e e and 4e e and 1e e and 2e e and 3e e and 4e e and. In rhythm language, tiki, 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 ti, ti, ta, ta, tiki, 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 ta, tiki, tiki, ta, ti, ti, ta. So in this one, 1e e and 2e uh, e and 3e uh, e and 4e uh, e and 1e uh, e and 2e uh, e and 3e uh, e and 4e uh, e and 1e uh, e and 2e uh, e and 3e uh, e and 4e uh, e and 1e uh, e and 2e uh, e and 3e uh, e and 4e uh, e and. In your rhythm language, ta tu Tiki tiki ti ti ta tu tiki tiki ta ta tiki tiki ta tu tiki tiki ta tu ta. So here's an example of uh, semi quavers in a very again a very famous piece of music, uh, Bergmuller's Arabesque. So if you have rests. Um, you're just going to count them the same way. You're just not playing them or clapping them. So here we have tiki tiki ti ti tiki tiki ti ti tiki tiki ti ti tiki tiki ti ti. Of course, we're not clapping on the or we're not playing the rest, so that's going to sound like tiki tiki ti ti tiki tiki ti ti tiki tiki ti ti tiki tiki ti ti. Okay. Stage three. So now we're starting to look at slightly more complex rhythms. Uh, we're going to look at some dotted rhythms and uh, here you see triplets. So how you might try to try to count these before. One, two and uh, three, four and one and uh, two and three and uh, four. I remember being mightily confused by these um, before. But again with practice. Um, and some different strategies you can you can get to grips with these two. First thing to do would be to count as much as possible in the triplets. Um, so count your uh, quarter notes or uh, crotchets as um, triplets as well. So then you would have one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and one and uh, two and three and uh, four and. Uh, so then in rhythm language we have ta triola ta ti ti triola ti ti triola ta okay so for um dotted quarter notes or dotted crotchets um i really like this one actually the rhythm language is quite fun for this one but counting in numbers um I was also asked to count the two numbers and then give the and to the following quaver or eighth notes. So then we'd have one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, one, two, three, and four, one, two, three, four. It confused me, but it is immediately easier to again count everything in quavers or eighth notes. 
So this becomes 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. But here's our rhythm language. I really like this. I think this is so cute. Tum ti ta ti ti tum ti ta tu ta tum ti ta 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 tu. The trick is to really hold on to this tum, really lengthen it. Uh, tum, don't go too short in it. Tum ti ta ti ti. You can compare, go back and forth between the counting and the rhythm language to really make sure, first of all, that. Um, you're accurate and really get a feel for how long that tum needs to be. So one and two and three and four and tum ti ta ti ti. Some exercises. So I'm just going to um, go ahead and clap this two ways. You can follow along. One and uh, two and uh, three and four and uh, one and two and uh, three and four and. Uh. In rhythm language, ta triola ti ti triola ti ti triola ti ti ta. Here's a combination again. You, uh, if you want to follow along, and I'll go through it both ways. One and two and three and a four and one and a two and three and four and. Tum ti triola ti ti triola tum ti ta. Okay, so here we are in stage four, and uh, we're going to start looking at some um, dotted rhythms and variations in sixteenth notes or semiquavers. If this looks like a mathematical equation, uh, it's not. I've just put brackets in to kind of uh, make it clearer uh, which notes go with which group. Um, but apologies if, if that doesn't actually work. Anyway, so um, again, so we've got um, semiquavers or 16th notes. So using numbers, we're going to count everything in, in those note values. So we've got 1 E and uh, 2 E and uh, 3 E and uh, 4 E and uh, 1 E and uh, 2 E and uh, 3 E and uh, 4 E and uh, 1 E and uh, 2 E and uh, 3 E and uh, 4 E and uh. Okay, so in our rhythm language then that becomes ta, tiki, tiki, ti, ti, ta. Tin ka tiki tiki tin ka ta. Tiki tiki ti ti tin ka ta. Okay, so as you, in the previous stage you saw tum, this would have been tum ti if it was um, dotted crotchets followed by quaver or dotted uh, fourth quarter notes. Sorry, dotted quarter notes followed by. Um, no, that's wrong, isn't it? Oh yeah, dotted quarter notes followed by an eighth note. Here we've, we've gone down a level, so we're looking at dotted uh, semi-quavers, dotted quavers followed by a semi-quaver. So it's tinka, okay? If you have this uh, variation, then rhythm language offers syncopa. Um, this might be one area where you might find it easier to count rather than um, using syncopa. I'm not sure. I, I tend to go back and forth between the two of them myself, uh, depending on what I'm looking at and what the context it's in, I suppose. So using numbers 1 E and uh, 2 E and uh, 3 E and uh, 4 E and uh, 1 E and uh, 2 E and uh, 3 E and uh, 4 E and uh. in rhythm language Tiki tiki syncopa tiki tiki ta syncopa syncopa ti ti ta. If you're using syncopa, if you in an instance like this, you want to make sure that you stress the sin bit um, so that you don't push out the where the beat falls accidentally, which I found when I was practicing this. So here's another variation. Um, Counting with numbers, 
one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and uh, one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and a. Uh. In rhythm language, that becomes T ticker T ticker ticker T ta ticker ticker T ticker tin ka ta. Okay, so let's practice that. Uh, I'll count and I will use rhythm language. One E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and uh, one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and a. Uh. In rhythm language, tick a T, cinco, pa, tick a tick a ta, tick a T, tick a T, cinco, pa, ta. Counting, we have. 1 E and uh, 2 E and uh, 3 E and uh, 4 E and uh, 1 E and uh, 2 E and uh, 3 E and uh, 4 E and uh. In rhythm language that becomes Cinco pa tin ka tika ti ta Tika tika tin ka ta tika ti So the question of ties and rests, um, very simply count them the same way. You're just going to either hold them or not play that particular beat. But there's no, um, there is some rhythm language ascribed to rests, but you don't necessarily need to use it. I don't use it. Um, I just count it the same way, but just don't play or you're holding if it's a tie. Okay, so some strategies for applying this to the pieces you're learning. So um, applying this to piano, you've got two hands that are busy, um, so you can use knee tapping um, to kind of get a feel for, for the rhythm before you actually play it on the piano. So I would practice hands separately, make sure you understand um, the rhythms throughout the piece and then and then put them together. So your your um, one hand would be tapping the left, I think this camera is reversed here but hopefully you would see what I mean so your left your left hand is tapping the left the bass clef and your right hand is tapping the the treble clef so um, depending what usually the the left hand is often steadier than the right and you have a rhythm going over it um, so a little bit of practice you might need a, to take your time and, and, and get it going but it's actually quite fun Another really nice strategy is to use two pencils so you've got a pencil in each hand and you're just on the page tapping the top line with one hand with the right hand pencil and the bottom line with your left hand pencil and going along your your piece of music and tapping away and uh, the, tapping through the rhythm okay so hopefully that will be of use to you as uh, when you're looking at new pieces of music or you know bringing pieces of music to lessons or preparing for exams um, this is not something that you're just going to look at once and know oh, I've got it then and you need to keep come back to it and keep applying those strategies and keep using them. Um, let me know in the comments if there's any anything else you'd like me to elaborate on or the other rhythms that you're coming across that, that, that uh, you're finding tricky. Uh, I'll do my best to, to help out. Um, in the meantime, add it into your practice. Take five minutes um, at each practice and pull out some music, any music, your sight reading books or old books or stuff you'd like to do. And just have a look at the rhythms and see, can you decipher them? And just spend some time, a few bars, uh, a line or two here and there. Um, you'll find that your, your overall rhythm reading will just get more instinctive. And that's what you want. You don't be trying to figure out rhythms when you're um, trying to sight read music or trying to learn a piece quickly. Um, Okay, so the very best of luck to you and uh, let me know as usual how you get on in the comments. I'd love to hear how you're doing. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already.